Okay. So you finish that video. Is it starting up again? Yep. Yep. Okay, cooker, 12 volt igniter there. So you just press and hold, or turn, press hold, and that fires up. Your burners. There is a safety device on the lid. So if you're trying to light it and it's not lighting, just make sure the lid's fully back. We had a few people bring it up, can't cook the breakfast because the, <laughs> the lid's not far enough back. Grill, is that the same? Grill, grill pan handles inside there. Obviously you wouldn't cook it, cook with it in there unless you like burnt fingers. In your oven. Lid. Okay, inside here, individual appliance gas taps on this left hand wall. You have got an info note there. They are colour coded so it tells you which one's connected to which. You don't need to turn them on or off. The main one is obviously on top of your gas cylinder. Always make sure you, you turn it off there. The reason why I show you them there is if it comes in for service, and obviously they're checking individual appliances, and they may turn them off. Obviously if they forget to turn them back on again. So if you're trying to light, the next time after service you're trying to light your cooker and it's not lighting, just check. Just to make sure they've turned it, or either left it turned off or turned on. Storage for your, for your draining board and chopping board. Okay, microwave. On this one, you've got start button. Goes up in minute increments. Or was it 30 seconds? <laughs> look at it then. Okay, it automatically starts. Yeah, 30 sec 30 second increments on that one. If you want to do it in seconds, that one doesn't. If you look at that, look, it just it's just going up to the auto stages. So to actually do the seconds, you have to press the power button once, which gives you the uh, 100%, 80%. If you want it different, obviously 80, 60, 40. Just keep pressing the button. To do the seconds, then you just turn the knob, the wait, and then just press start, and away it goes. Okay. Inside here, I've got the, the glass plate. Do not travel with that in there, because if that drop, drops out onto here, that's going to smash, that's going to smash, and it's going to be expensive. So make sure what you tend to do, either sneak it under there, or in the bowl with the tea towels, or that there, and stop it rattling about. Okay, always make sure it's cool before you put the lid down. The likelihood it will shatter if it's hot. Okay, bathroom. We're all going to end up in the bathroom. <laughs> Enough of us. Bathroom light is just on the outside. Okay, there, plus also a custom, the lock at the top. It's got a 12 volt flush, which is that button there. The only time you know the, the flush tank is empty is when it's not coming out. Okay, so that, there's no level for that. That little indicator there is a level for your waste tank. Okay, so when the waste tank's full. The toilet does swivel, so don't think it's, it's, coming, it's falling off when you're uh, sitting on it. And your waste gate, which I was talking about before, that lever down there, obviously it's open. It's the waste the waste container is not going to come out, so make sure that is shut. Okay, so obviously I'll open it to use it. Okay, your shower. Got a, so if I open the tap now, see there's no water coming out. You have got a lever there, a bit like your, your hose thing. If you want it on continuous, all you do is just turn that around. That allow it to go continuous. Okay, depending on obviously if you are going to use the shower on shower on board. Obviously, you've got a limited amount of water yep. that you've got to use, so that's what that's the reason for that type of hose. Okay, so you've got the, oops, the expansion tank for your central heating system. Okay, it has got an anti freeze water mix in it. If you need to top it up, all you do is just take the plastic cover off the top and, and uh, unscrew the top. There is a minimum maximum mark, just make sure before you start when it's cold, you think about fingers width above the minimum mark. It's sufficient, obviously it will expand when it, as it warms up. If you need to top it up, make sure you check what is the correct one to put, uh, fluid to put in it, uh, correct antifreeze, because some we've had all the customers who have put the wrong type of antifreeze in there, and it's just got it's, it's just clogged the whole system up and they've had to have it all cleared out mm -hmm. and flushed out. Mm -hmm. So if, if you need to top it up, just check with service, just to make sure you're putting the right mixture in and, and the right uh, antifreeze as well. Also in your wardrobe you've got your directional aerial, okay, you see that, Yeah. locking nut, and you can put it up or down, red spot, denotes front of the antenna, so you look to see where everybody else is uh, pointing their aerial, and hopefully they're pointing in the right direction, and lock it off. If you're in the, tends to be in Wales or Cumbria or something like that, hilly areas, you may need to change the angle of the top of the aerial, so by turning that, at the moment it was horizontal, you can turn it to vertical. Okay. Okay, by just turning that handle there. 
make sure it is in the horizontal before you bring it back down again because obviously otherwise you'll end up with a, a dint dint in the top of the uh, top of the roof is that just usually yeah it just, it just spin, it spins it spins around until it stops okay okay on itself you've got a obviously your like ignition key if you want to if you want to call it that so turn that on that puts power from the battery to motor mover Okay, to put the handset on, press both green buttons together. Press hold until the lights come on, the fingers off. Okay, first thing we need to do is get the motor mover onto the wheel. Okay, so you see orange button in the center. Press and hold that, then press the one on the right there. And you can take your fingers off now. Hear the motor mover moving, and it, it was in, it's indicated across there on, on the LCD there. So it's actually doing something. So you wait until that's finished, and it goes solid green again. Putting both sides on at the same time. Okay, we see the handset is still thinking about it, so it hasn't quite finished its process till it goes solid green. Okay, all right, so it's all the system is now ready to, ready to move. If you're on uneven ground, make sure that's shut because the last thing you want to do is that getting ripped off on a curb or anything. Obviously, that's expensive to uh, replace. Once the motor mover is on the wheel, you take the handbrake off because the motor mover is now is breaking the breaking the caravan. Also important that you make sure. See this groove here, which is the collar for the jockey wheel. When it's travelling, that that normally sits inside there. So make sure it's clear there when you want to use the motor mover because it won't turn out. So it'll just start to try and drag the wheel across and it won't steer. Okay, so, so it's ready to move. Okay. Picture on the handset, obviously pointy end, pointy end. So that's forward, that's backwards. The four corners are turning buttons. The one on my right, or your left, that one there, that will turn the nose left. So opposite buttons. So if you imagine you're sending it this way, that one goes that way, that one goes the other way. Opposite corners do opposite. And then you can press both opposite buttons together and that will try and pivot more or less on its axis. Okay, you've got speed buttons here. It will default to fast forward every time when you start it up. Okay, it's not, it's not quite Formula One. <laughs> if you want to slow it down, so, so there's different settings there, just press that one. So if it's on that side, that's the slowest it's going to be. But even fast, it's still not going to be uh, overtaking Lewis Hamilton. Okay, so you want to push the forward button. Okay, the good thing obviously about having a portable handset, you can walk around it. It's not a big toy for playing with either. It's not big. I had some customers say, Ooh, can we sit inside it and play with it as well? No. <laughs> okay. So be very, obviously be cautious if you're in a restricted area. If you do start turning, make sure you can see where the corners are. You're not going to climb anything. So you want to try and turn. You can also turn it's and forward it this or way so you need to watch time. the back yeah. to make sure. Okay, obviously as you take your finger off the button it will stop. You won't continue running. Obviously very important that you have a full battery before you start. Mm -hmm. Obviously it won't last if you decide to go try and go a mile down the road, it's not gonna uh, last too long. Okay. But they are quite quite fun to play with, but <laughs> if someone's playing with that and you're not getting inside and uh, getting it set up, someone might get upset. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they can do that later when they park it up. Okay. So imagine now we've just got this on the pitch. Okay. The first thing you want to do, handbrake on. Because obviously the last thing you want to do is take the motor mover off without the handbrake on. If you're on a slope, it's panic time because obviously you're, you're running there to try and find the handbrake and grab the handbrake. Okay. Other thing also, get it onto the car. The last thing you want is that motor mover still on the wheel when you're travelling off down the road. So what we recommend is put that on your seat. When you've when you manoeuvred it, just go onto the back of your car. Just either put that straight onto your seat so you don't forget. Don't put it on the A-frame or don't put it on the roof. Because they're, the light, they're going to disappear as you're travelling down the road. Okay? If it's on the seat, it's going to be a reminder, oh, have I done it? Have I got the motor mover back off again? Okay? okay. Yeah. Yeah. When you're finished, always make sure you take the, the start key out. Always take that out. Also, it can shut itself out sometimes. So sometimes when you, when you operate, if you hit the orange button or the off, on-off buttons by mistake, 
it can lock itself out. All you need to do is just turn the key, take it out, give it a few seconds, put it back in, it reset. So to take it back off, do you just turn that off? Well, all you need, oh, yeah, to get press it off, the two buttons. Press and hold together. the orange button, then press the, op the opposite one there. And you'll hear it, once you hear it moving, it'll start bringing it off. Oh, they are, they are very friendly. After a, while, after a while you think it's, cut, it's finished, it's gone all the way off, it won't get, after about a few seconds later, it, it just moves back slightly just to reset itself. So wait until it's fully done all its, all its operation before you do anything. Now you think it's stopped now, mm -hmm. it won't, you'll carry on, carry on, yeah. So the handset's still thinking, and it took, that's it. Yeah, it just, all it does, it just comes to it, it just resets itself. Once the green light stopped flashing on the, on the handset, that means it's okay to go. Okay. So to switch the handset off, you can either yeah, press both green buttons, hold, off, and off, and off, that's it. Okay. Also, the handset will go off without any operation within a minute or so. The handset will shut itself off anyway. I'm just going to save batteries. Are you happy with that bit? Yep. It's up to you where you keep the uh, key. Try to keep it in the locker, some people do. Or keep it with the handset. Totally up to you. Or These are fairly cheap to replace. And set on. Okay. Obviously. Don't okay. lose it. So if someone wants to hang on to that. Hits lock. It's very important to fit one of these. If you go into a service station and you're going to leave the caravan, always make sure you put this on. Don't travel with it on. Always put it on when you either get in, get into the into the uh, service station. And obviously, people can whip these off fairly quickly if you haven't got a, a lock of any kind. Okay. If you're connected to the car, obviously, you just leave it connected to the car and just put that over the top. Yeah. If you once you get onto site, or even if you're parked up at home or whatever you having it parked. So if you see that's just got a little bolt that comes through there. Just pull it over the top of the handle, might just have to wiggle it a little bit. That's it, locked. Okay, so it's, it's quite a straightforward one. Mm -hmm. quite, it's quite simple to fit one, especially if you get into a service station or anything like that. And just pops out. And you obviously make sure you get the, get the ball out before you try and get the power uh, the Okay, the wheel lock is slightly more difficult because you've got a line up. There's a, a little receiver inside the, uh, the wheel. Yeah, you can see, it, you can see inside there. Oh, so I, won't, I, won't, I won't put it all the way in because I'll just show you how, how you do it. Okay, so obviously one of the big holes needs to be in line with that there. You see that? Yeah. When you're travelling, make sure you put that in. That keeps all the crap and whatever out, outside the thread. Yeah. So that will fit inside something like that. Obviously that's going to be in line with that. We're having a motor move, it makes it so it so much easier. You just just tweak it back a little until you line it up. With mine, I haven't got a motor move and I have to rely on the missus to try and line it up and uh, have a bit of fun trying to get it lined up. <laughs> she thinks it's level and it's not, and I'm pulling it one end trying to get it level. Okay, so you've got the, the threaded piece that goes in. You've got a funny little spanner. Okay, obviously just all you do is just wind that in. You don't need to force it. Okay, all you need, just, just tighten it, take that out, got your lock, or lock barrel, give you a little metal key, all that does is release the, the ball bearings in, and just slides in, always put a little bit of oil on it just to keep it, make it easy yeah. to come in and out. Then also, you also got, so once your lock's in, you've got that little dust cap as well, so you don't want crap in that one as well. Okay. These are more or less, well, they say nearly 100% secure. These things, so that it's a uh, cutting torch. If you want, to, if you if you go and lose them keys, you're in big trouble. It's, it's an enough cutting torch to get get the thing off. So that, that shows you how secure they are. So make sure that you don't lose the keys. Can you get others cut? Um, or is I, it? I would I would expect so. Yeah, it all depends on the. It's got the pack with it. Oh, yeah. yeah, don't lose that. Obviously, that's your unit registration number. If you haven't got that, you're in trouble. 
Obviously, all the other bits as well. Oh, oh, so. Your dad's going to be 